welcome to everyone. My name is Sean and you're watching Ren11 Live. I am going to be joined in a moment by Lee Dean, editor of Duck and Whale magazine. If you're unsure about which specific magazine, there we go. He's in there now. Uh, if you're wondering what specific magazine that is, let me just showcase Duck and Whale. There you go. Lee is waiting and can't keep him waiting. Just invited him now. Oh, and as ever, I've got my drink, so hopefully you do. It's midday, so I'm allowed to drink. Lee, how you doing, man? Hey, mate. How are How's you? How's things? Not too yeah, bad, good. man. Not too bad at all. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, mate. I uh, really appreciate it. No trouble. No trouble. Uh, so, um, yeah, late on a Sunday afternoon or Sunday night here. Yeah, it's, what, 9 p.m., I think? Yeah, yeah. Well, late for me. I feel like I've been <laughs> driving all day. So I'm a bit bleary-eyed. You know, I, I feel exactly the up. same. We've just got a puppy, and uh, it was his first night, yes, last night. So uh, I don't think I got a wink of sleep, to be fair. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I kind of feel you, man. But, uh, um, but where did you go for a drive? Was it uh, a, a few of you? Um, oh, it was just a family thing. I've got, I've got three boys, and um, uh, so the you know, family went down south so we're you know four hour drive but um nothing exciting nothing to report but um yeah no just just for the just get try and get away and clear the head really of course so, yeah um, yeah restrictions of ease pretty much here so um you know australia the whole with the whole covid19 thing australia's kind of dodged that um we're, we're very lucky really uh, it's fortunate. Um, we're still going through it ourselves here. Um, we're, we're easing it and increasing the bubble as of tomorrow. So we're going to have like up to six people, but still being uh, a fair distance apart, two meters apart from, from each party as such. But yeah. do you know what? It's better than nothing. It'd be nice to see some people I hadn't seen in a while. So yeah. I can't use it as an excuse anymore. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, there's so much crazy stuff going on. Oh, you're telling me it's, it, it is an insane time right now. Um, but at the same time, you know, and, and this is the thing, uh, as you saw, I've, I've got all the issues by if you wanted to, like so many other yeah. people. Um, See, right. And it's yes, they did, man. It's brilliant. Um, and it's great that there's people out there that can f help with some form of escapism, be it, you know, cover to cover or a, a video or a vlog or something like that. Um, and it kind of... Yeah starts uh, it allows me to start with you know with duck and whale why yeah. what was the drive to create it in the first place um yeah well uh, my background is was kind of in magazines um as a creative so working here in australia and over in the uk on on car magazines um driving all sorts of different cars kind of you know featuring and um you know, writing and designing about cars. Um, I kind of moved out of of the mag game and always kind of loved magazines. And, you know, I think I'm a bit of a, bit of a romantic and um, I got used to looking at you and not myself. <laughs> my <phone. laughs> I kept distracting myself. Um, yeah, I'm a bit of a romantic with the magazines. I spend a lot of time in news agencies or, um, you know, like your WH Smith and whatnot, just, just kind of flicking through and just, kind of losing myself in that kind of those things yeah. and just a photo. Sometimes it's just a photo on in, in, a, in a whole edition and that just kind of captures you. Um, so I, I kind of moved away from that and tried to do some get to advertising and doing, doing different stuff that, you know, you're supposed to do to make money. And, um, you know, my heart really wasn't in it. So um, I wanted to get back into the cars and I'm, a, I'm a, just a car nut and, you know, it's in the blood and I just have to do it. So, yeah, the, the wife actually said um, I was going to do something else that was supposed to make, you know, a, a gazillion dollars. And, and the wife said, just do something that you love. Don't do something that, that just for the money. And um, so, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Here I am. That, it's the challenge, customer. isn't it? Finding something you love. Isn't there like some trifecta of either do something you love and it's really well paid, but it's a distance away. It's, it's three things. You enjoy it, the distance and the pay. 
and you can only have two of those three things <laughs> you know uh, allegedly yeah. you know I'm, I'm i think elon musk is probably enjoying himself a little bit now i think he's doing everything yeah. he loves and getting mad money for he, it he's worked out those three <laughs> yeah he's done well bless him ah that's, yeah. that's, that's, so so it was a real passion audio, by the way. Is that all right? it's perfect man i hear you absolutely perfectly okay. um can you hear me all right because i'm using my um my trusty headphones so hopefully that picks up a little bit um as i'm outside at the back is uh there's a lot of kids outside uh shouting and screaming and i'm just hoping that they don't get picked up so that's why. No and also a puppy <laughs> rolling around so um okay so and, and duck and well now has been around about what three over three years now hasn't it it started but you duck and well the idea behind it started about five years ago didn't it yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I guess at that point, um, being being a magazine creative, and I, I love kind of talking about the creative process and how how we kind of do that thing. Um, uh, I, I I left. A, I used to design Wheels magazine, which was like a flagship, like like a European car magazine. Um, and I guess I just wanted to put that kind of level of craft magazine craft into the Porsche scene, which it wasn't, you know, in at that point, but that I didn't think. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. It's, it's kind of blown up a little bit because these, these, these binded kind of co coffee table magazines, uh, let's call it that way, because each issue is almost like a mini book. You know, you have, everything yeah. feels very well cur curated and, and, place in a, in, a, in, a, in a great place you know you have teasers yeah. for, for instance one of the things i loved about issue 14 you had this little double spread page spread before the actual main um feature on the 60 uh, 964 carrera cup car and yeah. just a little little blurb uh, a little paragraph there from from someone who was attached to the build and you kind of like read it and think this is amazing it almost serves as a great teaser rather than as a contents page and, and then you're like i can't wait to read more you can flick through and, yeah. and and the the idea of of making it so beautiful does that come from your because I know you had a, a hand in design graphic design in the past as well. Yeah, yeah. So you know, art director, um, creative sure. director background, which is just a graphic designer that's been doing it for a long time. Um, yeah. So that's that. I, I guess if 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 I have a trade, then then it's graphic design. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make a beautiful, a beautiful Porsche book that actually tells, that tells stories. Just uh, you know, the 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 difference. I do I do love the other Porsche mags, and I do I do have them all. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Um, uh, you know, and I've got I've got them on my shelf. Some of the some of the really special ones that just stand out to me. Um, you know, in the years that I just, I'm just going to keep forever that just, um, you know, the sentimental or, or whatnot and, uh, you know, some octane and whatnot. Um, but I just Great. wanted to really give it, I just really wanted to give, um, I don't know, my, my point of view. And if, if there was room for that, um, that type of, a you know, an arrangement, um, which is really, really heavily, um, based on creative. Oh, it's, it, you, you can see, yeah, and, and you can definitely tell how much work you put into each uh, issue um, yes. uh, from, from everything. Um, it kind of leads on to the fact that I, I had uh, Dan Fur. he's the editor of GT Porsche magazine on a couple of times uh, over the last month. Yeah. And, yeah. and we were talking about the you know, magazines or print-based media almost disappearing there's a lot of the magazines the big magazines that we used to like read uh, or, or focus publications like japanese jdm magazines or or some of the european car magazines um they're they've been closed yet you know gt porsche uh, he told me that things are actually moving forward and upwards with that magazine uh, yeah, do you think do you think we've gone past that 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 huge fall yeah the dip are we moving back up because you know duck and whale is is you can tell it's doing well we've got we, we can actually now get copies directly from the uk rather than having to have them shipped over for our, from oz or or the us yeah um well well i hope so and i think i think i think print as a medium is 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 not dead um you know like 
when I was, you know, creating Wheels magazine or whatever in like 2004, it was a big headline, right? Prince is dead and the iPad's going to take over. But no one wants to look at a screen. Well, I don't. I don't want to look at a screen. I look, I look at a screen all day. The last thing I want to do is turn off the, the computer and then get on the screen and read. Yeah. So um, from that point of view, I don't think it is. But um, in Australia, like we started the mag in Australia and we went through that whole, I don't really want to do a big sell on the mag. I just want to talk about cars. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I know. I know. While we're I think... here. <laughs> we'll go into um, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we kind of, I, I kicked it off and put it through the news agencies, which is like your Barnes & Noble or your WH Smith, depending on where the, where the listeners are. Um, and that was just really sad. Like, it was just in massive decline. And people were just saying, don't worry, like, you know, are you just doing this for a hobby? Because you're not going to, it's not going to go well. You know, it was just this terrible thing. And um, we, we we did a few issues. I think we did three, three or four in the news agencies. And it was just, you know, it was like 50% got binned and pulped just because they, they just never made it. Um, it was just weird. Um, that can spur people on, can't it? You know, that kind of, yeah. no, it's not going to work. That, that can form part of like, okay, well, do you know what? I'm going to show yeah. you how it works, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm a bit like that. I just, I'm a bit like a dog with a bone. So I, I just was just look. I I think I can make a really nice product, and probably the distribution network isn't there yet, or maybe it's not invented yet. Um, but I think that in a couple of years it probably will be. So we just kind of persevered and mm. ended up doing the. Um, Kind of like a you know just direct to customer it wasn't really around. No magazine was doing really direct to customer at that point. Which is, yeah, you know. that's another thing. You you feel like you're actually part of it even closer because you're subscribed directly to the business that, that the company itself. So you feel even more, dare I say, uh, connected yeah you know, to to you and to to to, to what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you are. And, if you if you message me on Instagram or you if you you know you're typing on the help pretty much it comes through me and that people get upset they're like you know where's the help guy like he hasn't he hasn't emailed me in like <laughs> in like four days or something i was like well, it's me <laughs> you know, so, how much me how much oh of course you know but we, we've established this the other day behind every uh, mad genius there's someone who's who's really pulling the strings so yeah actually, <laughs> actually organized yeah yeah. Uh, I've, I've actually been telling my other half look i need you to i say I, I say pa but actually i think i need her to be my manager so <laughs> so that at least gets stuff done you know yeah, yeah. um uh, and how much of you just to uh, and, and, uh, again it's not i don't want it to be sound as a sell for the magazine i'm genuinely interested um mm -hmm. because uh, you you share this sentiment with me the human stories um and people sometimes don't realize how challenging it is to cur curate and not just curate, create stuff to then show to the masses and make it a cohesive package. So how long does it actually take to create an issue of Duck and Well? And it, the latest issue was brilliant because it had a real mix of stuff. Some of the stuff that I have a history in, you know, like the 964 on air suspension. And I, I've come from scenes that, that very heavily influenced with with air and, and airlift, and I liked how you, your tack changed as well with with, with regards to that. Um, yeah. So understanding, yeah, and that's probably massively controversial as well. Yeah, like you wouldn't see that in a GT Porsche. No, no. Um, you know, but maybe. I, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe it's now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so your question was, how long does it take to make a magazine? Yeah, how long does it take? Um, well, it's, it's probably it's probably a month of photography and then um, a month of, of actually putting it together um, and then a month of production, like on a, on a simple scale. Yeah. And then the quarter, that's it, boom, another one's out and you're constantly working and then obviously the background scenes of preparing people to do the photography and then the stories and whatnot yeah yeah so yeah it, we have different things lined up and 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 you know there's things moving at all different different times um 
but we also control a whole lot of um you know global logistics stuff going on because we we distribute now in the uk that's down in reading yeah reading. it's reading you got it right first time around reading first time reading yeah. and um we're also over in california and um up near san jose um for the for the u.s market and um up there here i am talking about the magazine again um but, but that's, that's a great it's my thing fault. you know like it's just awesome for us to be in those markets direct so that people can, they don't have to wait for anything to be delivered from Australia, um, which is, which is awesome. So yeah, we're really excited about the growth and, and, um, just people being interested in, in the magazine. It's, um, you know, very humbling. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, well done on it, man. Well done for both you and, and, and everyone involved. Um, so let's, let's, let's get into, you know, your, your history of Porsche. Cause I know you've got a 73, which looks awesome uh, and I, I've, I've seen videos in the past and I know you drive them which is great I, I, I remember hearing that story or watching that story a little while ago of someone crashing into the back of you um, uh, and then you uh, you nice. nearly got off the line <laughs> no, but, yeah yeah yeah, uh, but, yeah, but, yeah. So, uh, I was well. just driving in traffic I, I think I'd um it's happened twice. So the the first time I was just, I, I think I was driving back from a local Porsche Center thing where we were just doing it, doing, I don't know, with some, some event, some launch thing. And then, um, yeah, it was just, we're just in traffic and you just feel that little bump, you know, that little bump where the person's pretending that they haven't hit you. But, and, but you look in your vision mirror and they've got that look on their face like this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And I was, I was in the middle of a three-lane road and I just jumped out of the car, left-hand drive. I jumped out of the car in a right-hand drive market, so we can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, I was just, you know, I jumped out of the car and I'm like, what the hell? And I was just walked up to the back of the car and the lady's just in there, like, you know, put, put the, like, the lock on. You can hear the... <laughs> <laughs> You don't come across as a scary person. You must have had. I'm not must scary. Have been, exactly. I'm quite small, but I just was like, oh, you know. <laughs> and I'm looking at her. I'm looking at the car, and I just pushed the back of it because you know it's a fiberglass rear rear bumper, and yeah. it just it just moved. It moved like a fair bit. So I'm just like, oh, look, it's nothing really here. But I was just I just had the shit, so I'm I was annoyed. And uh, this, there was a tradesman next to me. He goes, "Man, awesome car!" And then he looks back. And the, the girl like crashed into me and, and just goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't and then help he just it. Off, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But it, uh, it, my car's got an LSD and it just had um, semi slicks on it, which were pretty cold at that point. And um, yeah, I just left the line off the just off the clock, stepped off the clutch, and just it just sailed up the road with this nice little walk. And I uh, think <laughs> you can't be upset after that. Did the local council have any cameras around that bridge that you were under? I was under thinking to about like, that. I was thinking about that, but hopefully yes. they could send me the the, the footage because I didn't get any. Footage. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. But at least it was something minor. I, do you know what I mean? I just turn eighteen. When that happens, I'm just like I'm eighteen again, and I'm uh, and then I kind of you know wind back and go, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that, but oh, yeah, well. Um, so your history in cars. Um, yeah. you know where where did you start i know in australia it, it, there seems to be a, a common theme of you either ford or holden or or <laughs> or, or, or it, especially in the early noughties there was a lot of jdm activity um yeah, uh, yeah. i think the cost of imports was was uh, a lot less so you used to see a lot of s14s s15s um you know and, and, and the like over there well, but, yeah how old are you sure uh 38 so yeah, I'm 42, so I'm kind of a little bit before that scene. Um, in my my high school year, there was guys with like Ford Escorts. Um, what were the good cars? Kind of. So you had your Escorts, Cortinas, and I don't know if they, yeah, you've got those, right? And, yeah, of um, course. Uh, there was one bloke with a Mazda RX-3. Ooh. And he was just the king of the school. So, <laughs> well, of course, it's an RX3. Yeah. It's awesome. So, uh, we got into early masters because they were just cheap, cheap things to play around with. Um, I went to school on the Central Coast, which is just um, about an hour out of Sydney, 
um, a lot of kind of separate towns with with roads kind of linking them up. So if you didn't have a car, you didn't have a license, you weren't doing anything. So, um, you know, there was a big car culture up there, which was awesome. And, uh, you know, it kept, kept me away from doing other things, mm. um, which is good, which is <laughs> all car culture kind of does that to you. Cause you, you know, you keeps you on the relative car. safe and narrow. I say relative, because let's be honest, when you're 18, you've got that kind of power under your foot. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. So um, I had my little, uh, what was what is a Holden Gemini as my first car. Okay. Which was like 70s cars. So I've always had 70s cars. Maybe I, I'm just, I just like the feel of them. Um, and then I went from one of those, which is, I think, a, what do you guys call them? They were a Vauxhall, something like a little square box. Oh, um, uh, not a Cavali Cavalier? No. Cavalier or Cadet? Or Astra or no. oh Chevelle, <laughs> yeah, was probably it the that. Chevelle? yeah, it was the Chevelle, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I went from that, which was about 45 horsepower at the most, to a peripheral port, um, RX2 sedan with like a Ford, Sean Ford nine inch, and a like a Toyota box. I used to race, race with like Toyota four speeds, like Corona boxes, because they were really strong, they could take 400 horsepower. Um, what the jump <laughs> yeah straight into that and it was just you know i spent all my money on the thing and it was um yeah it was craziness but uh yeah, yeah. yeah. it was a There's power some... war thing back then it was all kind of that thing of course and it's um, infectious yeah yeah which was fun and that, that that stuff was fun and and those things make amazing noises natural aspirated um and things went into turbos and whatnot and and um always always um, regret selling that thing, but um, it was it would handle terribly. It was too low. It w went like a bullet in a straight line, but it couldn't go around a corner. Um, and uh, from there, I went I went overseas and I was working for um, where was I? Um, over near Auto, I worked for Auto Action at um, God. You're gonna have to correct me. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> publication houses that I can't remember, um, which was I'm which stumped. was awesome. And okay, <laughs> getting a, yeah, it was a it was a good memorable time in your life. Someone yeah. someone listening, anyone listening, <laughs> that can tell me what the hell that is. What's the publication house for Auto Action? Um, Auto Express. No. Uh, um, uh, right. It's not going to be Future Media, is it? So Future the train out of London somewhere on the Thames. Uh, it's going to do me. Uh, uh, on the Thames, Henley, uh, Oxford. Um, trying to think of areas now, and I can't. I'm done. Yeah, all good, all good. And um, anyway, I did that. I came back to Australia and started and worked at, at Wheels. Wheels was kind of the car kind of pivotal point where I went from big horsepower, stupid cars. This was before drifting. We, we, you know, we, you would just do third gear power slides everywhere for fun in these stupid cars but they wouldn't go around corners and then wheels was the thing which showed me the finesse and and the driving skills and and um so wheels was kind of like evo driving. and octane yeah. almost yeah 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 yeah. Ah. yeah um so and driving cars you know that that, that was like a massive uh, magazine in the city where you have like an underground car park just full of cars so it was it was a dream job where they, they this is before this is before the iPhone before anything any smartphones so they had they had a diary on the desk with um, all the cars that we were featuring and, and testing at the time and and all the keys were just lined up next to it so at the end of the day you just grab the keys next to your name it's like your name would be there and they'd just be like a you know push on eleven beside it or whatever quality an, an Audi <laughs> thing or whatever you know if you did good. If you did some good stuff and you were you were working hard, then you know you get the better cars. But we can, I, my first Porsche experiences were the 996, uh, 987, moving forwards. Um, probably stand out was the GT2 drive in the 997 in the rain. Um, wow. Okay, that's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> we one of the publishers. 
Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I was used to huge horsepower things at that point. And, um, you know, that thing was, what, 570 horsepower. Yeah. Um, I think I had the thing with the with the tyre spinning at third gear along a really open part near Sydney. And um, the, the publisher was just like, what are you doing? You know, I mean, this, what was it? I don't know, $400,000 Porsche at that point in Australia. Australian dollars. And, and yeah. I was, you know, the designer of the magazine. So um, not like the lead, the lead journal. So, but I was Did just kind of used to it. And, and um, I've always been used to sliding and, and that kind of thing. And, and to talk about driving and to talk about car control and things, you know, that, that, that part of it, to go on a, onto a track now with a car that says, you know, 200 horsepower as opposed to 600 or whatever, that doesn't break traction and, and all of those things. It's got enough horsepower. It's got adequate horsepower. But to put it in a chassis that's really nice and subtle or an, or an old classic chassis, then you can really kind of work, work the best out of the car. And if it comes undone or, or anything while you're trying to get the best out of it, um, that's, that's a bit of fun. It's not a scary moment. It's easier to, to sort of deal with, with, with a, a lesser powered car in general. So. Yeah. Well, if you, if, you, if you spend your whole life trying to get to the point of traction where it, it, it breaks, then you know when, when it is going to break the other way around. Does that make any sense? Yeah, oh, completely. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because what you're essentially trying to do is, is, you know, then you know where you can have the kind of fun that you do break traction, and you know where you can have the fun where you're you're trying to get from point A to point B as yeah. swiftly as possible. Yeah, yeah. So you can play right up to that point where it does break, and and hopefully just on the edge, which is which is good. I'm not I'm not a hero steer or anything, but um, I just try my best. You raise a very good point, you know, because I'm very new, although I've been a massive Porsche um, fan for, for many, many, many years. Um, I've only recently got my 996 and, you know, it's 300. Uh, it, it, I think it was 300 horsepower when it was made. It's probably like 280, 275 now or something like that. But it's still, it's, it's a very different beast from everything else I've driven before. You know, I've had rear-wheel drive in the past. I've had E46 M3s, and, um, you know, uh, MX-5, which I still think is one of the best handling cars I've, I've ever driven yeah. in my life, the N an NA one, um, 1. Yeah. 1.6. It was a Unos Roadster, you know. Um, and They're beautiful things, aren't they? They're so balanced. Oh, it They're was just... incredible. I, I had it in winter. Uh, winter, what was it, 2006. Um, it was hilarious because uh, I bought it. Uh, typical of what I was like back then. Um, I, I bought it, clutch went <laughs> about three hours after I bought it when I got home. Um, but, you know, sorted the clutch out and I enjoyed driving that thing even when it was cold and it was even slippery. But because it had like, what, 100, 110 horsepower, if that, um, yeah. from the one six, it was just so much fun, easy to, to, to like you say, learn where the, the points are where you, you can lose control and it's, it, it's controllable. It's lovely. Yeah. But yeah. now with the 911, uh, I'm, I'm sort of trying to find my feet again. And it's an early 96 with a cable throttle. Um, so yeah. no traction control or anything like that. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to see and understand things. I've, I've noticed there's, there's a moment where it feels incredibly light and almost like I'm not connected to the ground at some point. So I'm thinking, right, is this, is this the point <laughs> that I need to... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Almost. Uh, uh, but then it easily just gets back in with, like, uh, you know, lifting the throttle slightly and, and, and it works perfectly. But I, I feel like I want to get to know the car an awful lot more, you know, and yeah. it's, it's finding so, decent roads. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you get it on the track much or it's just not your, you just like to drive it on the roads? Well, I was due to go to my first track day at the end of next month, um, but because of COVID-19, it's been cancelled at Goodwood. Um, so I was prepping. I was, I was on PlayStation wow. uh, playing the Goodwood circuit on the 996 yeah, GT3. Yeah. It's the same car, really. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, getting the, the racing lines and, and, and sort of understanding, more to understand just how the track is and how it looks so I can remember things yeah. in reality. Um, and I was going to be doing a video feature on that as well. But sadly, um, it's been cancelled yeah. or postponed. So 
and I really want to try it because everyone says how addictive it is. And, you know, I, I, I believe nothing in what I hear and only half in what I see. So I try my, my, my utmost to, to sort of stay level head. And I don't think I, I may become an absolute track rat. I may be so induced by um, the, the feelings and, and the senses that I get from it that I'll be like, okay, I need to mortgage my, my kidneys to, do, to afford this. But at the same time, you know, there's, there's, there could be, uh, I'm, you know, I may not, but I need to give it a try. So you were going to probably suggest it's worth doing track days. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, if you, if you want to just to talk about how, um, how I kind of got into that nine eleven from doing all this stuff. Um, well, yeah, that was the next question, funnily enough. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, starting the mag, I didn't own a Porsche. I loved them dearly and um, had driven a lot of them on the other side and drive them as I'm shooting and whatnot. Um, you know, and I'm always super grateful for, you know, for um, the owners of the feature cars to let me drive them and, and be so gracious, um, which is wonderful. But I, I'll tell a story that we, that we um, the owner probably doesn't know about, but... Um, <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Um, so it was. It was a. What is that? It was. Um, it's. It's a nine six nine nine six C four S that had been supercharged after market. And okay. Uh, yeah. So the guy didn't want to go the turbo route. And he bought this thing and 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 kind of pursued it and and. It, bounced around a couple of different tuning houses and whatnot and ended up with this, you know, it was, it was a bit of a, you know, I got a chip from here and, you know, with, I added this and kept moving around rather than getting it fully sorted. And the car looked great. You know, it had all the GT3 stuff in it. And, um, uh, but it had, it had like a lump of horsepower and it, it drove like a, like an early 930, the way that people say, you know, it's scary as hell. So this, it would just, and the driver was like, you know, urging, you know, urging me on, you know, I, I want you to feel the power, I really give it a go, you know. And I'm driving around the street. And <laughs> it had this weird thing where about about 60 k's an hour, it the the supercharger would make the car like jump forwards, like you would just be driving along and it went and just pushed pushed forwards, which was really, really, really kind of strange. Mm. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not a mechanic, but I kind of have a rough idea. But anyway, so we were coming up to a corner. It was a bit of a straight and whatnot um, before the corner. So he, he said, you know, give it a give it a go here. So we were up, up you know, I, I, I'd given it a good go up the hill. And I come off the gas and the car keeps going. Like the, the, the supercharger doesn't dump the atmosphere. And I'm off the gas, but the car's accelerating. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Which kind of like freaked my brain out. I was like, "What's going on?" And I've jumped super hard on the brakes, trying to go, like, oh, "You know, we can stop this kind of play." <laughs> and um, had a huge moment where I'm like, "I'm coming in with like way too much speed to get around this corner." <laughs> and um, so I just broke really hard and turned it in and did this four wheel slide up to the you know, doing my best Chris Harris up to this. The, the apex of this corner and because the you know the 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 c4s has so much grip it just kind of grabbed on with all four wheels and just dragged itself to the apex of the corner and then we just kind of put, putted around the corner and and you know my my seat just filled up with with poo you know and, <laughs> oh i can imagine that literally i'll have a story for you in a moment you know, it's not my car and i'm like you know it was it was terrible and i was freaked out but I was just trying to keep calm and <laughs> and the owner's gone, wow, that was amazing. You know, <laughs> you just caught that so well. <laughs> I just got out of the car, I gave him the keys back and I just said to myself, like, oh, we just can't do that anymore. If we're, we're going to do this stuff, I need, I need to sharpen my skills, you know. So I went looking for a car where I, where I could get on the track and, and, and really kind of sharpen my skills. Like, like I felt that they were kind of coming off Coming off, you do so much driving and, and uh, being with the magazines, with the kind of mainstream magazines, you're always driving with with motorsport guys and, and 
actual drivers, professional drivers that can give you tips all the time. The journos are good. You know, there's, 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 there's proper drivers, you know, and then there's the, the journos that are kind of sit under them. And then there's the kind of everyday heroes underneath. So, mm. but I think, you know, journos are, are great, great drivers, but um, I was kind of up, up, up in the middle there for a little while. And then you get out of the game and I just felt I was kind of numb and my skills were a bit blunt and, and just driving that car just rammed home that you need some more practice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that, I just went looking for a car that I could um, take to the track and do those types of things. So um, uh, it was a bad time to buy a 911. It was, it was, you know, the prices were high. Everything was high. Oh, gosh, it was actually quite recently. Or uh, recent, more recent than, than uh, you know. Around the start of the magazine, yeah. So oh, gosh. Recently. Yeah. But um, so, at the same yeah, time, it's gone up furthermore. So you're kind of like, it, it still Probably. paid off a little bit. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know about the last few months, but yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah. Um, but I just, I just needed the car. I just had to have the car. I, I just couldn't deal with not having a car anymore. Um, so I went looking for one. I was looking at, at an old uh, 70s um, car. I think it was a T as well, but it had become an ST race car that had been raced for a long time. It was it was really lovely, and um, I ended up in some bidding war with a guy from Bermuda on that one and, and lost. He's not paying any tax, so okay, but, yeah, he'll be fine what? then. Let him have it. So that, went, that went, you know, craziness. So um, <laughs> anyway, we um, I found uh, a friend of mine that works at a, at a workshop had a car that a guy was getting out of and um my my car had been raced for a long time it had probably been through the tarmac rally years which were really um you know really big round in australia around i don't know in the 2000s and whatnot okay. um around the launch of the gt3 and before hands um so it's probably been binned a few times and cut in half and stuck back together and, and whatever um uh which, which most things have um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it was an old kind of war horse rally, uh, you know, uh, race car or club car, and um, but they were racing it on the side and and um, quite good steers and whatnot. So, um, I, I wasn't looking for an early car, I was looking for a 964 or a 993, and they just said, Oh, look, just take this car and take it for a, for, a, for the long weekend and bring it back on Monday, you know. Um, and that was that. That you know, was that. Uh, just give it, <laughs> just give it to someone to drive. Um, yeah, he's you know, and he was saying, you know, what do you want out of a nine eleven? Um, which is a bit of a loaded question, because everyone wants everything out of a nine eleven, really. Don't of they? course. Like I, you... I want to drive on the streets and tour, and and I also want to drive it on the track. Mm. I, I want it to be reliable, to be big, but <laughs> be like a KN. Yeah, you know? exactly. So. But the old cars, you can't do that, you know? They have to be one thing. Um, they don't have a switch. I, th I think you have to get involved and, and actually own uh, a, a, a 911 of some kind to realise what kind of 911 experience you want. Because at least yeah. that could be almost like a litmus test. So then you know, well, this is nice, but I would like more, or I would like less, or I would like, you know, less... Um, uh, I don't know, creature comforts or something like that. But you have to have that established, first of all, to know what you really, really want. Ooh. Oh, here we go. I saw that, what Luff Club said. Uh, a learn, learner driver with a narrow G body, uh, 22.7, has all he needs to upset almost everyone. And, you know, he's right. You know, I've, I know people who have Audi TTs, the, the, like the 1.8T, and they run rings around people with high-end, like, supercars, uh, you know, around, like, bends and stuff, because they don't have the the knowledge, the deep knowledge of how far they can actually push that car, you know? And then yeah. that, that's probably that concern, that worry of, well, oh, this is, like, £400,000 worth of car that I'm about to stove into that corner. Mm, yeah, I'll yeah. lift off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah, so... I was I was talking to a lot of guys, a lot of old guys that spent a lot of time on the track and just trying to work out what's what what would be a great car 
And I kept saying, I like that GT3 feel, but I can't, I love the classic look. And is there anything that's kind of like that? And, you know, um, people that build GT3s will tell you that it's not, doesn't have that feeling, but I guess I was just after something raw and something mm. kind of motorsporty. So I, there's, a, there's an older guy, um, uh, what is he, that him? Um, who had like a replica, um, a yellow replica oh. 11R 67 thing that he would race all the time. And he, he just said, get a car, don't get a, a massively powerful car because it can hide all the mistakes you're making. <laughs> you know, make a, if you want to learn and learn skill, then, um, and, uh, you know, make a, get a slow car and, make, and drive it fast and learn how to drive it fast rather than getting a fast car and, try, and just driving it type of thing. That's so true. these are his words. Everyone with the new GT3. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, this is how you burn bridges. Come on to Ren 11 yeah. and then make a statement like that. Absolutely terrible, Lee. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, um, I, I, so, I agree, yeah. though. You know, I, I think... I think when it yeah, comes you to, have to really drive them. Yeah. and and there's a sweet spot of speed, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's great that cars have um, the ability to hit 170, 80, 90, 200 mile an hour plus cars, and that's great yeah. pub talk, isn't it? Nor to sixty times, great pub talk. But but how much of that power is usable? How much can you actually enjoy it and get a kick out of it? Um, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. The, the, but the, look. Having said that, I do get monstered by the GT3s. Like it's, um, it has its sweet spot on the road. If it's a really twisty, twisty, twisty road, almost like you know, I, I surf. So if, if you've got a wave and you, you can get your board to fit in the curve, it there, there's a there's a section there with the right board and the right curve will fit perfectly, and there's nothing will touch you. It's kind of like the the roads. If you're, if you're on a really twisty road that just suits the car, suits the kind of LSD and the gearing and whatnot is, and the, the bigger cars like the duty freeze or whatever will feel, which just won't fit in that, in that space as well. And kind of, you know, they'll bottom out or something or they'll, they'll just be searching off the road. You won't be able to push as hard. So th there are little bits where the car really shines, but on the most mm. part, if you're on a big open road and a, someone in a 500 horsepower duty three puts their foot down, you've got no hope when you're 200. Of, of course, uh, right. and 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 the the you know out corners and and everything like that. The car's just going to leave you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just it's just kind of I thought I could um, have a bit of fun on a smaller scale type of thing. And that's the thing. What defines what, what do you define as fun? What does the individual who owns whatever they have define as as fun? Second gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Top of second gear. So yeah, second and third. I, I remember the first time I, I drove the car, and um, uh, I love GT3s. Like we drove, I, I had the most fun in, in a um, in a nine and seven Gen two GT3. I, like we we had it for a lunch time, and um, it had to go to another magazine, and we had an hour or something. So we we drove some stupid amount of k's to, to this this special road um, outside of Sydney mm. to to get to this end point and then make it back in an hour, um, myself and, and another, and a journo. Um, and we were just sitting there, like this guy was a well seasoned kind of motoring rider, just giggling like a little kid at the sound <laughs> of his car, you know? So like, I love, them. I love, them. but, um, <laughs> yeah, the first, I think the first time I drove that, I got my, my old car. So my, it's a spec if for people watching that don't know, I've probably said it a lot on, on the videos and whatnot. It's a, it's a, so it's a three liter, this steel line, three liter, 200 horsepower. It's basically, it's, a, it's an old RS rep. So it's a nine one nine one five box, the three liter, um, the CSI Bosch, um, injection, it's got an LSD, it's low, everything's tightened up. And, um, You've still got the 1552s. It's got, so I've got 1552s, I've got 16 inch hooks, and I've got um, the Group 4 16s that oh. I just swap around. 
quality. And um, uh, yeah, it, it had the Fuchs with the with the uh, Yokohama A fifties on it, and um, which were really hard. So the whole thing was slamming through the city. <laughs> but I, I was coming out of the tunnel up up towards my house, and it's a big open road, and I was just second gear. Just I slowed right down. It was in the middle of the night. There's no one around. And I just started from a stop and just up up in second gear and and then just into third. And it's just such a lovely shift that if you get it right on the nine one five. And it just it just just the just the engine going. It just kind of have you ever seen that um shell ad with the all the Ferraris to going through the years, all the Formula One cars and it starts really early? I've not seen that. I need to find it. And I need to do some YouTube research. Yeah, oh, look, just type in shell ad where there's a guy driving through New York or something with a really old um, F1 car and there's like a cab driver and he goes past his window and he freaks out. <laughs> it just sounds like that, you know. The, love that. So, um, yeah, I just kind of fell in love with the old thing. It's interesting because, you know, a lot of people knock the, the 915 gearbox. Uh, I've driven a G-body with it um, uh, a little while ago and I didn't... It's just before I realized that there was a problem with that box. And when thinking back about it, I was like, I don't understand, you know, why, why are people making the saying this stuff about it? Maybe it was a sweet one. I don't know, but. You know. Yeah. I, when I first, when I first drove that gearbox, there was a mechanic um, who was looking after the car for the bloke. And he's just, I, I drove up, Porsche had lent me a, a new, a new, um, I think it was the first 718 Boxster. So okay. I jumped out of that and I was like, you know, look, look at my brand new thing that I just jumped out of. And I'm getting into this, you know, 915. What, what was that thing? It might have been a two, it might have been a 27 Carrera two. 74. Okay, yeah, yeah, it would have made sense. Yeah, 27. And, and he's just looking at me like, like, do you understand? <laughs> That it's not it's not 2016 it's it's 1970 like <laughs> it's, just, it's just hammering it into me no I didn't like this move like this <laughs> you know don't just jam it you can't jam it just it, it's just like and he just did it to me like about five times I just remembered this guy's face just staring at me like do not break this gearbox <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what so, a way to learn <laughs> so from that point i was like right okay so i understand so, so there's no there's no like you know flat shifting up the up the freeway so what well, no uh, and, and you take it, go on. It, it's so much fun just to drive a car like that and not to not to rush it around you know it's all the fun's kind of second and second and third and moving through those that gear shift and um and and you're not doing wild speeds either, you know. You know, yeah. you're still that point you know, you're again. Still relatively within the speed limit, especially. You know, I'm just trying to do a conversion on what it is, so 60, 60 80, 40 to sixty mile an hour, whatever. Yeah, but, but that's it. It's it's everything else attached to it, isn't it? You know, uh, it's the 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 sensors, the sounds, like you say, that gear change. I know you've got a thing for that that sound, you know, of, 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 of when you change that gear, you know, gear and the lift off and then plugging the, the throttle on, it sounds amazing. It, it's all of those that combine to make the feeling of this is someone's Nirvana, your own personal heaven, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, I, I get that. And, and for me, I, I, I don't really, a lot of my friends are very still, uh, my older friends are, uh, are very, focused on yeah but you know this car's capable of 150 mile an hour this rs6 is a monster it's rs4 you know leave everything for dust like yeah but i'm just gonna get a bit bored by just putting it to sport and just going <laughs> forward i mean come on yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and i think i think that's a that's a thing like i there's a lovely road up near our um it's called west head uh, near kind of where we live and mm. it's it's this lovely national park road that, that winds out through the through the forest through the bushland and then splits into a, a the two lanes split and it goes around the headland that comes back. Um, so you can kind of go all the way out and then come in and come back and you realise that there's no one on it. Um, 
I get myself arrested. Oh. And then, um, <laughs> Mate, I know you used to do street racing as a kid, so that's it. <laughs> the world knows, man. <laughs> you got to do research on people. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fast and furious is my life. But, um, uh, yeah, so we had a um, an Audi, what was it, an RS6, the, the, the twin turbo V10. Okay. Um, oh, um, yeah. the, the V10 from the, the Lamborghini. Lamborghini, yeah. 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 So driving that road with that car, especially massive big sweepers and everything, you can um, you can really get get the feeling of, of, of that track, track kind of experience, like being up to the edge um, because of the speed and the, and the power of the car. Whereas you can't get anywhere near that in my car. You can just feel like I need a turbocharged car to actually experience this road right there. Um, so Interesting. it's a bit like you, you need more than one 911. So you've you got the classic <laughs> one to do that thing with. And you also, you know, you need the, the Turbo S or the, you know, or the whatever to, to do the touring or drive the snow or, you know. Mm. So there's room for more. And that's the thing, the 911, that, that is always room for more, man. I'm already, like, I can't really say much now because um, she's in the garden, but, you know, we understand what I'm thinking. No, don't, don't, don't. She's concentrating on the papa, so, uh, uh, but I, I agree. And, and the 911 is one of those very few cars that you can have a variety of, and each one will be a different beast. It will be a different animal, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. wonderful. Even the even ones of the same year are different. When you drive a lot of, you know, you drive a lot of cars, it's like these these are supposed to be the same, but they're, they're different. Especially, you know, obviously the handmade ones got their own nuances and the way they handle. Yeah, it's so. it's it, we're, we're fortunate with with, with with that brand, really. You know, with, with what it what's capable of and what it, what it offers. So. <laughs> I've got some questions for you from the um, from the folks here. So there was one. It was from a gentleman from Atlanta, actually, 911 South. And he asked, how would you compare the Porsche culture scene in Australia versus some other places like Europe or the US? Um, it's probably a little smaller, but um, no less is passionate, I, I think. We had... Um, We've had two little Ren Sport festivals here down at um, Sydney Motorsport Park, which is our awesome. kind of motorsport haven because everything else is shut. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, it's alive and well. I think I think I think Australia was the second most was the second export market out of out of Germany, which is kind of crazy. Really, In the early days. Yeah. And Gosh. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think so, and mainly, mainly just per chance with with one of the one of the guys over here was trying to get um, like officially anyway. I don't know about the UK. Maybe it's a third. Let's just put the UK in there. Ah, uh, oh, mate, it's fine. Don't worry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna That's lose you. Thinking, what, what the hell? <laughs> and um, and uh, it, it's 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 regarded as an enthusiast market. So um, we, we're definitely mad about the cars. And uh, there's a lot of coffee and car meets and, um, and you know, a lot of track day stuff going on for sure. So I think, look, I, I haven't been to a lot of events in, in, in Europe. I've been up to a little, um, to a few events in, in the, the US, but, I, but, you know, we need to do more. I've, I've got a young family, so I'm just trying to get, do as much as I can. But as I grow older, then it's going to allow for that. It's balance, isn't um, it? Yeah. yeah. It's our 10 year anniversary with my wife this year and it's coming up in like five days or something and we were congratulations to go and do, yeah thank you we we're, we're going to do a big trip through europe and you know do the whole thing so you know just like everyone everyone's everyone's just kind of waiting to you know move forward with that stuff but um you're telling yeah, me no, no. Hopefully, hopefully i can come to more stuff and, and enjoy that you know enjoy the scene yeah, well, no doubt. But if, if you ever everyone find... speaks the same language, like you know, you and I can just talk about driving. You know, it's just cars. It, it, and that's the thing, you know. I'm I'm first and foremost a car person, you know, above all else. You know, I've had a variety of cars like you, you know, um, 
Uh, and for me, anything with with wheels and uh, internal combustion, and oh, to be fair, any motor now, I'm I'm kind of moving in that direction. I'm sorry, uh, but I understand that the necessity for electrification. But at the same time, uh, it just it it it's my thing. It's, it's my jam. It's always been my thing. You know, from Knight Rider to you know owning uh, a Porsche, um, and yeah. and I think that's like you say, it's 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 the same spoken word. I have a lot of friends over in that I've met through this um, from Brisbane. And there seems to be a real thriving scene over that way as well. Um, yeah. and, and, and everywhere like that. So I hear what you're saying. Good question. Good answer, man. One last question um, before we have to go. And it's from Velocity Artisans. Um, and they ask Porsche 914. Love it or hate it? I love it because it's a Porsche. Yeah, they actually drive really nice. They're an amazing thing. Um, I love I, I love the mid-engine Porsches that that I think they're massively underrated, um, all the, all the way through. So, yeah, I, I've I got a friend that, that lives near me that we that we shot um, Dennis Brooks' car. Um, what was it that in? I, I need a list of all the cars featured in all the magazines and just have the. You know, issue 12, issue 11. Issue this 11. car, so page 54. Go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. I'm, you know, that's not good enough, Lee. In my brain. I'm, you not know, good that's, enough. That's, my wife can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Delegate. Well done. I like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we drove around in that thing and I just, I just thought it was amazing. Um, and it, that was a 914.6. Um, and uh, the seats are a bit crazy, but. <laughs> um yeah look they i think they you know they have a purpose and they have their they have an aim um and and uh i think they do that really well it's 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 a lovely balance it's and they, and they are massively different and even the boxers like the you know they're a great car I love um, the you do so I much love them. uh you're right you know um i I think all the sports cars that Porsche have, have created have got their own unique character. Um, and I'd love to drive a 914. I was in Wolfsburg last year. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to Wolfsburg. And because it was its 50th anniversary of the 914, they had these huge glass boxes with different uh, iterations of the 914 over the years from 69 to 74. Um, yeah. And it was just—it was really impressive just to see. It was a, a big pride thing because obviously it was the bulk of Porsche, wasn't it? Like back in back in the day. But yeah, mm. uh, I I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Lee, I wanted to say, uh, I do actually, no doubt. I, I, I'd love a nine fourteen now. The, the more I look at them uh, and and the capabilities of what you can actually stick in the, I know mm. it's 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 a cardinal sin. We shouldn't put anything apart from Porsche. Uh, engines inside a Porsche, but you know, seeing a V8, oh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. small block yeah. Chevy inside see, one. See, putting putting those engines in, look, wh whatever whatever that is, and and the and the uh, motivations behind that. What what that shows is that the chassis massively over outweighs the engines of the you know the two liter six or whatever they were putting in. So, how know, well engineered? It's a very very sophisticated kind of chassis, and um. No, I, I recall driving a, a 2.7, um, an early, early Cayman, and just just trying to drive the pants off the thing. And, you know, I couldn't get anywhere near the limit. Like, the, you can get them to slide and whatnot, but the grip on those things was amazing. And the, the engine was, the, the, the chassis here and the kind of engine was here. And just playing with the chassis was just so much fun. So, yeah, massive it. underrated cars. They're good cars. It's about to cut now, so I just want to say, Lee, thank you so much. Brilliant guest.